Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. This is Jonathan Jew with Imaginatic, and I wanted to welcome you to Imaginatic's Innovation Master Series. Thanks again for joining us. For those of you who are new, Imaginatic sponsors this series specifically for people who lead and drive innovation at big companies. Innovation is still a relatively new topic, and there are not many places where people in our industry can get together and share and learn from each other. Our speakers are your colleagues, people who are focused on and succeeding with innovation today. I do want to mention that today's webinar is being recorded, and everyone who has received uh, an email registering for this event will receive another email when the recording is available for you. Before I introduce Dennis Hoover, I did want to talk about the new normal in today's business world. It's the reality that no business is safe and no market leader has true long-term security in today's marketplace. The threat to every company is disruptive tech competitors and technologies. These disruptors can come out of nowhere and move with incredible speed, and these disruptive forces exist in every industry. Ignoring your own company's need to innovate is inviting these more nimble competitors to steal your customers, steal your markets, and put you out of business. Let's look quickly at three examples. I mean, whoever thought companies like Blockbuster, Kodak, and Borders would ever go out of business? They stuck with a business model that quickly became obsolete, and they paid a really high price for it. Nobody on this call wants their logo up on this slide, and today's market leaders are recognizing that innovation is key to driving both short-term results and long-term growth and viability. In fact, truly, to thrive and survive in the turbulence of today's markets, Companies need to make a serious investment in innovation, not just scattered campaigns that produce occasional wins, but true enterprise transformation that embeds innovation in the company's DNA and drives repeatable and predictable success. At Imaginatic, it's our belief that innovation needs to be a primary function within every company, just as important as sales and marketing is, or product development. We believe that it's hard work to build a sustainable innovation competence. It's hard work to replicate successes and create a climate where failure is not only tolerated, but encouraged and studied. We also believe that it's key to partner with the right company, thought leaders like Imaginatic, that understand and meet the challenges of embarking on a transformational innovation journey. How do we help big companies to develop a sustainable innovation competence? We do it by addressing the critical aspects of your program and ensuring that each of these is optimized to achieve your desired results. For example, a strategic plan that gives you targets to shoot for and gives you the tactical steps necessary to get you there. Developing innovation expertise in your people so that they can take the reins and make innovation really go in your organization. An award-winning software platform to ensure a steady influx of new ideas and a robust product pipeline. Highly optimized processes to move promising ideas from concept to production. The real products and services that will generate tangible results for your business and bring you those benefits. And finally, a culture where innovation can thrive and people are encouraged to think and act differently in new ways that ultimately will benefit the company. The innovation journey is different for every company, but we definitely see some common best practices and approaches where you can be highly effective when embarking on your own innovation journey. Innovation needs to be addressed at an individual level, where long-held mindsets and ingrained behaviors can challenge your efforts to encourage free thinking and create a climate that's receptive to new ideas and concepts. Innovation needs to be addressed at a collective level, where physical and virtual spaces need to be set up for teams to interact and collaborate and allow creative collisioning to happen, which can lead to the big disruptive ideas that really change the game. Innovation must be addressed at an enterprise level where it becomes systemic and repeatable. Established systems for governance can measure your progress and be optimized to ensure speed and avoid the challenges of institutional inertia that can kill promising new ideas. Enterprise software platforms bring discipline and scalability to your efforts and enable your company to engage employees, partners, and customers anywhere around the globe. The innovation journey is not measured in months, but in years. Companies begin this journey at the established phase, where they've just begun to invest in innovation, develop their processes, 
and run idea campaigns to establish early successes and momentum. Once an organization once an organization has a few clear innovation successes under its belt and has worked out most of the kinks in their version one process, it enters the develop phase. This stage is all about repeating successes and looking to develop a true innovation rhythm. The embed phase finds an organization that has perfected its processes and spread these across most of the organization. Innovation has become deeply rooted in the company's DNA and success is calculated rather than lucky. An optimized organization is a recognized model of innovation excellence and is seeing the benefits of their commitment to innovation. Many companies want to reach this state, but few have the discipline, the skill, and the perseverance to achieve it. Today we're here to learn more about one company's very unique innovation journey. Our presenter is Dennis Hoover, Chief of Staff Emerging Technologies at Exelon Corporation. Dennis wakes up every morning focused on innovation and is a key part of the newly formed team that drives innovation forward at Exelon. Dennis is currently focused on the processes and tools needed to develop innovation as a core competency at Exelon. We will take two quick breaks for Q&A at the halfway point of, and at the end of this webinar, so please submit your questions by typing them into the comments box during the webinar. Please join me, everyone, in welcoming Dennis. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks to all the folks at Imaginatic for hosting this series of innovation webinars. I found them to be uh, very beneficial for my own, my own purposes. I'm very excited to share our journey with you today. And attempt to, I'm going to attempt to cover as much information as I can. I'm, I'm going to try to uh, provide lots of advice and, and some of the things that we've learned in putting together our innovation practice at uh, Exelon. And just very quickly, a little bit about me. Uh, I've been on the technology side of the energy business for over 30 years. I worked uh, on delivering solutions across the energy value chain and been involved in many areas of uh, the energy industry. I most recently have participated in a certified innovation mentor pilot program that the Whirlpool Corporation, University of Notre Dame, and Memorial Hospital put together. It's been very beneficial for me personally and uh, highly recommended. I'm going to go through kind of our journey of how we put together our innovation practice starting from the very beginning and how we were able to do it in a relatively short period of time by taking advantage of some of the things that we learned along the, along the way. Uh, how we formed our team, how we set the priorities for the things that we've looked at and uh, looking at our methodology going forward. So very quickly, a little bit about Exelon. We are uh, operating in over 48 states, the District of Columbia and Canada. We're about $24.9 billion in annual revenues with approximately 26,000 employees. We operate across the entire value chain, energy value chain. So generation, we are the largest um, nuclear, have the largest nuclear energy fleet in the United States, the third largest in the world. We uh, also have a growing amount of renewable energy, a hydro, solar, and wind generation, transmission and distribution. We have a wholesale and retail energy uh, trading and products and services business, as well as uh, three regulated utility companies. So we're, we're quite a, a, a diverse organization to give you some idea of the size of the company that we're dealing with. So as we, we started our journey, we were, had just completed, the Constellation Energy Company had just completed an acquisition of two large uh, Texas energy companies. And right after that acquisition, we merged with Exelon. So Constellation Energy and Exelon merged. We uh, established our first Chief Information and Innovation Officer, a brand new IT leadership team, and we're going through extensive merger integration efforts and trying to put these systems together and integrate the, uh, the, the products and services that we were going to deliver as a combined company. You can imagine that we were dealing with a, a great diversity of, of organizational structures, organizational cultures, trying to look at how we bring those things together. And this is one thing that, that I want to try to point out in these first few slides, is the impact of the things that we were seeing is not unusual, it's not unlike the, probably the same types of things that you're looking at within your company. That 
you will see because of we are such a, a diverse organization, we have manufacturing, we have customer facing, we have regulated and unregulated businesses, we have lots of different parts of our company that could be very, very similar to the types of organizations that you're in. But we're also, there's never an ideal time to just, when everything's nice and quiet and you're able to sit down and form your, your innovation practice. We were facing all of those normal business challenges as we were going through this, this exercise. Uh, in our case, normal because we go through a lot of mergers and acquisitions, and that was something we had to adjust for. We were going through lots of organizational changes. All of those things were internal impacts to the, to the company. So what we, what we were then faced with is some of these external challenges. So if you look at the emergence of digital technologies and how the expectations for employees, for customers, for, uh, for suppliers, for our partners, all of the expectations are being impacted by all of these different emerging technologies that are coming in. So we've got this combined internal and external influence of, of uh, technologies and, and trends that are starting to impact the, the organization. So we realized quickly that we had to put a new organizational model in place to drive our innovation practice. And you'll hear this common theme across a lot of innovation uh, practices, this idea of an ecosystem. You have your internal ecosystem, which is usually made up of your internal organizations that focus on innovation. There are usually some pockets of people that, that focus on that within your organization. But then you have external opportunities and external ecosystem members, your suppliers, your, your consultants, your research firms, your academia. These are all members of our external ecosystem that helped us in, in our innovation practice. So our ideas were how do we combine these things? How do we provide that bridge between our internal ecosystem, our external ecosystem, kind of moving from our traditional ideas of our technology roadmap and our, our long-range planning processes that everyone usually has within their business. Those are very well established, very well ingrained. But innovation is very disruptive to some of those processes. And we needed a way to be able to bridge that and focus on our, our two areas of initial focus were on efficiency and growth. And those were the areas that we knew we had to start to work on with our new organizational model. So we embarked on a discovery tour. Now these go by many names. You'll hear them called InnoVisit, uh, um, the Imaginatic Associated Roundtable. Of, of companies to, to get together and, and talk about their innovation practices. We traveled around the country and we looked at what different organizations have done that have established innovation practices. Now some of these companies, it's just been ingrained within their culture from day one. But there were always some little tidbits of things that we could pick from, from what they were doing. And we could see some of the areas that they, where they struggled and we could correlate some of that information back to what might work for our organization. Because we were essentially starting from kind of the, the beginning. And yes, we did have some innovation activities, miscellaneous internal things that were going on, but not really a concerted combined uh, focus around innovation that we were trying to promote throughout the organization. So we visited those companies. We, we learned as much as we could. We talked to them. Uh, we, we wanted to come back and kind of jumpstart our innovation efforts. And if you, if you look at this two-by-two two matrix, this really tells the tale for us in how we got started. You'll find in most companies that there's no shortage of ideas. There are many, many ideas that are out there. But it's, it's the opportunity and the way that you're able to filter those ideas and find those high-value, high-impact opportunities. So if you look at that upper right part of the matrix, you'll see those are the areas that we really want to go after. The business really needs our help to solve a complex business problem that has potentially high value to their organization. So some of those other quadrants are typically handled by your, your normal uh, you know, support teams, the teams that are out there supporting those business areas of the organization. So we were very clear that we wanted to focus on getting to those high-value, high-impact opportunities. And one other thing you'll see is, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, is the definition of our elevator pitch. It's very important for an innovation practice that's starting within an organization to have an elevator pitch. 
because people look to you, if you're part of the emerging technology team or the innovation team, and you meet your, your fellow employees, they expect you to have something interesting to say when they ask you, what's up? How's it going? What are, what's new today? They, they want you to have something interesting to say. So you, it's important to have an elevator speech, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. So as we went through, we developed a team, we, an organizational structure that kind of fit our organization that, that combined some of the things that we had heard as we traveled around and talked to companies that had very common things like, uh, well, we, we compete for resources with the business areas. We've got a good idea, but we can't get resources to do those things. Or we don't have the funding. There's no money to be able to do it. Or we just don't have the visibility. We don't have the opportunity to, to do those things. And we formed this organization that is made up, made up of some phenomenal people. Now, one of the things that, that my boss was able to do was basically in a very quick, rapid period of time, uh, was able to look out across the organization and find people that kind of had the, the particular attributes that we were looking for to develop this organization. And you see that we have these different areas. The scout team, the scouts are basically the people that go out into the business areas and they're, they're searching and mining for those really high value, high impact business problems. Where's the business really struggling? Where are the opportunities out there where they're just not able to, to make any headway or, or to find something out there? And they work very collaboratively, very well together to kind of brainstorm on these ideas of where are uh, the, the opportunities and how can we scale these things to, to be able to leverage them across wide areas of the, of the organization. And then we have our Emerging Tech Labs team, which these are the, you know, and I'll use the term the, the nerds or the geeks in, in a very, very uh, constructive way. They, these guys, I love these guys. They're able to do anything. They can build anything. They can create anything. They're very good at, at working on incubating our technology. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. But they are looking at some of these kind of leading edge types of things where we don't have a business sponsor associated with those things yet, but we need to learn and understand a little bit more about how this technology operates. To give you an example, uh, we were an early uh, uh, investigator of the leap motion device and looking at gesture controls. And how would gesture controls be able to, to be leveraged maybe within our trading operation, you know, or, or some areas of the company where we may be able to leverage gestures. We, we need to understand a little bit more about what the capabilities and what the limitations were. We often need somebody to do some development work or programming work or to prototype something. That's what those guys do for us. We're not competing for resources there. We have those resources available. Then we have our business office. Those folks are actually our communications, our marketing. They help coordinate a lot of our events. They help get the innovation word out to the organization. They promote and organize a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about today with our, our uh, game changers and our dancing with the startups and some of these really interesting things that we put together, our imaginatic idea, our idea challenges. They manage that within that part of the, the business office. And then you'll notice under our director, the financial uh, expert, our financial analyst. Now, this is a critical component of an innovation practice, in, in my opinion. You'll hear often that it's very you know, for innovation activities. It's difficult to build a business case. It's difficult to find that that number that you're going to use to justify or build or, or quantify uh, and develop your metrics within the organization. Well, we have an excellent person who's been involved with startup companies, with with nurturing and developing new businesses. He's very very good at developing a business case that is very comprehensive, very uh, supportable. Now, what's interesting is the dynamic between the scouts and the financial uh, uh, director. That, that the scouts are always looking for the most value they can get out of the business. And the, the financial analyst is, is really pushing back on them to say, you have to prove this value. You've got to make sure that this value really exists within the business area. It's an interesting dynamic to see that, that uh, pushback uh, back and forth. So, um, we've got a, an excellent team of people. It's not real large when you think about a company the size of Exelon. This is the emerging technology team, the innovation practice across Exelon that um, 
that is focused on efficiency. So we are working with all of the different business areas. So in building the team, some of the things that we look for in, in getting folks together, um, and that my boss and, and our, our chief innovation officer looked at, were people that had kind of a, a passion around technology, a passion around understanding and creating and, and looking at things from a different perspective. So it's not necessarily the traditional skills that people have within the, um, the business, but it's the opportunity to look for some of those areas of experience, some of those areas where uh, we are looking for people that work well together. Collaboration is absolutely key. So it's the, you know, people that are collaborative, people that, um, that are good at brainstorming, come up with great ideas, are able to follow through, make things happen. There's a lot of characteristics. Now, some of the places that we visited, this was an area that, that took them a tremendous amount of time. I mean, we've talked to people that said it takes them over a year to select an employee to be part of their innovation team because it's such a, a competitive and difficult, and they're looking for certain criteria. And there, there are different tools out there to help you um, look for people's uh, affinities for certain types of innovation activities and things like that. So we, we just basically were, were lucky in being able to pull together a great team of, of individuals to form our emerging technology team. So I'm going to take a break right here and, and uh, ask if there's any questions that we have so far on just the background of the organization, the complexity of what we were dealing with, the impact of, of all of the technologies and the emerging trends that are forcing innovation to be part of any business in today's world, and then how we developed our organizational structure. Dennis, thank you very much. And I did want to mention to everyone that there is a question panel in the console. And if you'd like to submit your question, just go ahead and type it in there. We'll try to get to as many of them as possible. So Dennis, as they say, the proverbial uh, phone lines are lighting up here. So let's get to as many questions as we can in about five minutes. The first question, Dennis, is can you talk a little bit about executive support for this initiative? and how uh, critical that was for those initial steps and driving your initial success? Very good question. Very good question. And uh, I, I did want to highlight that and, uh, quite a bit. It is absolutely imperative that you have the really the thought leaders and the influential people within your organization that are supporting this effort. Now, what, what happens is many times you'll find people are skeptical until they, until they start to see some results. So it's a, it's a difficult thing in handling the disruption of innovation and being able to balance that against showing and demonstrating some results that then gets your leadership buy-in. Now we started, we were fortunate enough to start with a chief new, remember that we established the, the first new chief information and innovation officer within Exelon it was very focused on making innovation a core competency. So we had that top level support. Now, over time, it, it, didn't, it didn't take long, but our CEO really became supportive of our innovation effort. And even to the point where he was a keynote speaker at our last Innovation Expo, really focusing and mentioning the words innovation and really talking about the emerging technology team. And you, you can't imagine how far that goes to have the leaders in your organization, especially at the very top of the house, go in front of your colleagues and the other people, uh, their direct reports and some of the other uh, vice presidents and managers and talk about some of the things that you're doing within your organization and how critical and important and imperative it is for the organization as a whole. So absolutely, you, you, you may not have it initially. You've got to build it up quickly but you must have it. You must have that support. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Next question is, what was your biggest challenge in developing the culture at Exelon? Can you talk a little bit about your strategy, your major supporters, and how that took shape? Sure. And, and that, uh, I'll actually have quite a bit more in the presentation that, that will get into that. But, um, let me just say that, that one of the things that I heard at the, uh, I actually heard it at the Imaginatic uh, Innovation Leaders Summit was someone uh, made the comment that in order to imp 
impact the, the culture, you have to change the climate of the organization. And that really stuck with me. The changing climate that people are, are operating in, it, it's almost like your own internal climate change that's happening. That it happens gradually. You're, you're changing the way people do things. So the way that they do their long-range planning, the way that they do project management, the way that they budget things is slightly different with innovation. And you start to change that climate that they're working in, and you start to highlight and, and indicate the areas of innovation that, that people are starting to get recognized for taking risks, for doing things that were unthought of in, in the past. I mean, think of a, I mean, how much risk do you think a nuclear power plant, a nuclear company wants to take? And yet, and yet there's an appetite for a certain amount of managed risk across an energy company to be able to compete to be able to provide the safety and, and uh, security that we need. So there's, um, there's a gradual change in the climate that people are, are working in that results in your ultimate uh, um, change of your, your uh, culture within the organization. So we're still you know, going along that journey, but what's happening is all of these subtle changes are occurring. We're changing our management model processes. We're introducing new terms um, new, new uh, terminology and definitions and new processes and things that now people are starting to see a lot more around innovation and that ultimately results in the change in your, your culture. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. I think we have time probably for one more question. We had quite a few comments on your use of scouts, Dennis, um, how you found these people, how you gave them incentives to actually take on that kind of a role. Um, what challenges they ran into, how they encouraged people to share ideas and feedback. Can you expound on the concept of scouts? Sure. Um, there are a lot of scouts. Is, is, the scouts is a fairly common approach to to uh, moving, you know, working with the business and finding those opportunities. These were people that came not just from one part of the organization. They came from other areas of the organization, kind of a mix of, uh, you know, some from technology, some from the business directly. And they had usually some sort of influence. They were usually a catalyst for change within their parts of the organization. So, for example, someone from Generation, the Scouts from Generation, is known within that organization as a catalyst for change, as someone who, who they can look to for some ideas. And the same with, with some of the other um, areas of the business where we, we put position scouts in those areas where they had some influence. And then you, you really have to support your scouts as a team because the scouts can go out and find those, those problems, but they really need the support of the team and the help of the, the lab team and, and all of the other scouts and, and the rest of the organization to help them really identify those potential opportunities. And we do a lot of these things very quickly. You'll see this a little bit further along in the presentation. You'll see how we go about doing some of these things and what, what the scouts are doing and what the folks on the team are doing as well to be able to support them and move forward on those ideas, pivoting when we need to pivot away from something that may not be panning out the way we expected, and, uh, and then being able to move forward in the areas where we have the highest uh, degree of confidence. Dennis, thank you very much. We're going to move forward now, and thank you everyone for the questions. Please keep submitting them, and we'll get to as many of them as we can at the end of the webinar. Okay, so, so let me uh, jump into now um, the, the first start of our, our uh, innovation methodology and the, the approach that we took. We, we looked at all of the different things that we needed to establish, and remember the comment that I made about developing your, your elevator speech? Well, this is the start of that. These are our four I's. We call these our four I's. Inspiration, ideation, investigation, and implementation. And I'll go through each of these in a little bit more detail. But when you get on the elevator, when one of us gets on the elevator and somebody asks, well, what does the emerging technology team do? We say, well, we inspire, we ideate, we investigate, and we implement. Those are things that we can talk about, we can remember them, we can get into the specifics and details as much as people want to talk about all the things that we're doing. Well, what are you guys, you know, what sort of ideas are you guys looking at? And what are investigations do you have underway? A lot of, of quick and easy ways.
way for us to talk about how we're uh, developing our innovation activities from beginning all the way through to, to implementation. And this is all part of our foundation, what we call our pillars, that we have for, for innovation across Exelon. So if we look at the inspiration side, this is, this is something that we started uh, developing quite a, quite a few aspects of this. You'll see in here, and I'll, and I'll talk about these in a little bit more detail, but you'll see things like our Dancing with the Startup series. So what's the Dancing with the Startup? It's where we, we actually go to an incubator. We have about 20 to 30 companies that may have some uh, it, uh, interesting approach, a business model, or, or a technology, or something they're looking at starting up. And it may be of interest to an energy company. Or it may be, in some cases, it could be focused specifically on a particular area that we have an interest. So we did a, a dancing with the startup. These 20 or 30 companies come in and they do a pitch, kind of like a shark tank type of, of uh, approach where they're pitching their idea. Here's what we do. We can bring business cases. We can bring resources. We can bring funding to help these companies. We can partner with them. Um, but there's a lot of things that we can bring to the table to help some of these startup companies. But what we get is we get inspiration. We get ideas. We get new thinking about how a company that's very as large as Exelon can start thinking like a small company. You know, how do we think like a startup? How do we operate like a startup? What are some of the things that we could leverage around that? We brought in some innovation speakers to talk to our leadership. Again, it's focused. Remember that support from leaders. Very important, you bring in some influential people to come in and, and provide them with some information. It really goes a long way. And then our innovation expos. This is a great, great opportunity for us to really showcase the organization, to get inspiration started with our innovation practice. And, and I'll go into the, uh, the innovation expo a little bit more. They're usually based on a theme. Our first theme was around big data in 2013. Um, we do about two of those a year. And we, um, we do a kind of an introduction of the theme and the concepts around that. We bring panelists or speakers in, keynote speakers. We, we bring all employees. All, uh, it's only open to company employees, but it's open to all employees that are able to participate in the expo. And then we have a poster contest. The poster contest was really, really interesting. This is where someone who feels passionate about a, a particular idea or innovation or something that their organization has done that they want to present. They're able to develop a, a poster, a regular poster. We have uh, several of these set up in, at our expo. People walk through and they, they talk to the folks and they learn about what this idea was and how this operates. So they learn about some of the different innovations that are occurring throughout the organization. They form new collaboration, new partnerships. They, they, they build relationships between some of these different areas of the business. And they're really inspired to, to go out and, and start to see some of the, uh, their own areas of passion and be able to, to do some things. So we've already done um, another uh, one of our expos. We were very proud to have our CEO come in as a keynote speaker at our Innovation Expo, really talking about how important innovation is to the organization. He, he made some wonderful comments about how great the poster contest was to be able to walk through, for his leaders to be able to walk through and see some of these innovation activities that were going on throughout the organization that they, they may not have had the exposure to. And here the passion some of these people have around some of these opportunities. So um, this, it's, been, it's been a great inspiration as a key component to really get that change in the culture and the change in the thinking. So this is a little bit more information on the expo, how many employees we had come out. We, we, just, we have these usually at different locations in the country because we are so distributed. We'll have one usually on the East Coast and one in kind of in, in the uh, Chicago area. Um, you see the vast number of posters. and then. The winners of the poster contest, the employees come through, they talk to the, the poster contest participants, and they vote on the posters that they think are really interesting, that they really like. And those, those winners then get awards. They get innovation awards. So not only do they 
get the awards, they get the recognition, they get to present their ideas to our executive leadership. So that's, that's a big part of changing the culture too, is the visibility that people get around things related to innovation. Innovation ideas, innovation implementation, um, inspiration, collaboration, the things that people are doing, they get that exposure, they get that visibility. So one thing too you'll hear in a lot of innovation practices is what are the metrics that you use, how do you develop metrics. We have many of those. We've developed them over time. This is one that we, we use during our expos. We do a, a survey during the expo. We have little iPad minis. We go around and we survey the attendees, attendees and we try to get some sense of you know, how well this organization um, or you know, this, this event was, uh, was organized and how, how well this event went over across the organization. So we've had very, very positive results from our innovation expo. And then moving from inspiration to ideation, this is where we do lots of very interesting things. And I'll get into these in a little bit more detail. I talked a little bit about the dancing of the startup, our game changer session, very interesting approach that we're taking, crowdsourcing, and of course our ideation challenges with Imagine X. So we, we developed several, we've now uh, completed several of these, but we have these thought starters within the different parts of the business. And we are able to leverage the, the tools and the, and the methodology to be able to find those ideas that are, remember, high value, high impact opportunities that we want to go after. We want to filter through those ideas and get to those things that really are going to have an impact on the business. So let's talk a little bit about our game changer. The game changer sessions, and there are different names for these types of tools or, or these um, innovation uh, techniques, but this is where you're basically looking at your, your current business. Now, keep in mind that a game changer session is all of the leaders, all of the leaders, the change agents within that particular part of the business, that particular, in, in this case, within ComEd, which is uh, one of our utility companies in, in the Chicago area. Within ComEd, all of the leaders got together. They performed several different exercises to kind of get their juices flowing and think, you know, about new new ways of, of approaching problems and looking at things. So they look at their existing business, they look outside at some adjacencies and some other opportunities that may exist out there, some emerging trends, technology, and then they, they just kind of brainstorm some of those ideas and looking at, out across uh, where we thought there would be the most uh, application across the organization, again, with an eye towards scalability across some of the other utility areas. But in this case, we usually come up with our game changer sessions with maybe four or five of these goals that get set up, these action items. And each of these gets assigned an owner and they get tracked. Now, now think about this for a second. Compared to the traditional long range planning process or the traditional you know, projects that a business has in place where we're going to upgrade this system and three years we're going to replace this. And, and put this upgrade in or something like that. You still have some of those infrastructure components, but innovation is disruptive, and you have to have a way of being able to find those good opportunities that, remember, all of those leaders within the organization now have heard this story. They've all, they've all understood that this is, the, this is the priority. These are the goals that we want to go after. Here's who's responsible for it. Here's how we're going to track these things. So these are real game changers within those parts of the organization. These come in and disrupt the normal process. So this is kind of some, some screenshots and some things that kind of shows our dancing with the startup. One of the sessions we had with an incubator called 1871. This is one that we use. Um, there are, again, other groups that, of these things that, where we get uh, these small startup companies together that may focus on, maybe focus on energy or some energy related. Topic. So they could be very specific to cybersecurity or some other areas where we, we really want to bring in those areas of the business and hear what some of these startup companies have to say. What are they doing? What are they thinking? What, you know, where are they we're finding some traction and be able to, to get through um, some of those things. And then our idea challenges. So this is, again, just some, some illustration of the tools that we use during our ComEd um, Imaginatic Challenge and how we leverage some of the tools 
and, and the, um, the methodology to be able to find those, those good opportunities, those good ideas. But also, identify some of those people that are passionate about solving problems within the organization and be able to identify and, and cultivate that uh, thinking throughout the, the business. This is, this is a, um, an interesting area of our external crowdsourcing. Now, there are tens of thousands of students and graduate students out there that are part of this MindSumo um, crowdsourcing initiative. And we actually post challenges out there to this crowdsourcing organization, and the students respond. So if you think about how great it is for companies where we retain all of our internal IT, but we get all of the benefit of tens of thousands of students out there and graduates that have great ideas of how to solve some problems in new ways outside of our industry, outside of our thinking, without the constraints of some of the things that we, we typically bring, the baggage that we may bring with us in trying to solve problems, they're able to look at these things with a fresh set of eyes. Now, it's so great because instead of doing things like stacking books in the library, they're able to solve problems for big, you know, for lots of companies, lots of businesses, and they make money doing it. They make, um, they, they get, actually have jobs going through this process, and they earn points for being good at solving problems for different companies. And they, they actually can target the, the areas, the students that, that are very good at solving maybe a manufacturing or supply chain problem. They can actually focus on those areas. Very inexpensive. Lots of companies use uh, the, the external crowdsourcing solutions out there. So again, uh, talking a little bit more about ideation and some of the things we've done around incubation. I mentioned our gesture control. These are some things that we've done, wearable technologies. We've got several telepresence robots spread around the, the country that we use for interacting at uh, meetings or for inspections or, or lots of different activities. We use the robots for those types of things. Experimenting with the Oculus Rift uh, virtual reality and some of the other uh, Google Glass and a few of the other uh, technologies out there that could help us in an industrial uh, format be able to leverage some of the new emerging technologies and, and big data trends that, that we're taking advantage of. A lot of work around sensors and some 3D printing activities. So again, remember that our emerging tech lab team, they focus on incubating ideas that don't necessarily have a sponsor at this point, but they're trying to learn what are the limitations, what are the capabilities, what does it take to be able to develop something that's going to connect to our network, that's going to be available in the field, that's going to be rugged enough to, to uh, sustain some of the, the um, effort that, that will be put against it and you know, be, be most beneficial to our customers. So these are the kinds of things that we do to our incubation. In the investigation areas, this is really our proof of concept and pilot. So when you think of investigation in our in our case in our terminology, these are these are our uh, proof of concept. This is where we're looking to develop from a business problem, develop a business problem, uh, put together a hypothesis on what we think may help us deal with that problem, test the hypothesis, learn and document, and then pivot if we need to pivot into a, a new technology or a new approach or a new way of solving that problem. So you'll hear often, you'll hear uh, people say, well, you know, innovation is all about failure. You know, failing fast, fail forward. Um, you'll, you'll hear, you'll fail cheaply. You'll hear many of those uh, comments made about, around innovation. But what I'd like to do is really think about this more from a, a idea of forming, uh, creating the business problem or, or identifying the business problem, creating the hypothesis, testing the hypothesis, and then documenting, learning, collaborating, sharing the information, and moving on to the next evaluation. Now, if you just think about that for a second, the traditional uh, approaches for, let's say, your HR department in developing the goals for an employee may be, well, you've got you know, three projects to get done this year. We want you to get those projects done. They're not going to say, well, we want you to fail 10 times this year. Uh, and that's going to be a positive thing for you to do that. They, they want, you, you have to find a way to evaluate people that are in an innovation practice or in an innovation role in a new way. So if you think about that for a second and say, well, I, your job is to identify business problems, develop a hypothesis, 
test the hypothesis, uh, document the results, and collaborate and share, and then pivot if we need to pivot. Then there's a whole set of skills associated with understanding what tools and techniques do I use to, to make sure that I've developed the right, identified the right business problem, that I have a good hypothesis, that I'm testing it correctly and, and adequately, that I'm learning and I'm collaborating with, with the other folks and sharing that information as broadly as possible so that we go through it. Now, if you think of someone who just does that during the course of a year, they've completed a significant body of work in which to be evaluated. So do they have the skills to do it? Do they have the tools and knowledge and expertise to be able to do all of those things? Identify the business problem, develop a hypothesis, test it, collaborate, share and pivot? I mean, if they do, then, then those are the types of things you can evaluate an employee on as, as you look at uh, developing the innovation practice. So um, these are some of the investigations. Of some of these terms you, you may not be familiar with. Um, Obviously, some the customer retention project, the LIDAR project is, is kind of a laser um, uh, street, streetscaping um, laser uh, solution that identifies all of our equipment out in the field in, in a specific area with, with laser technology. We have lots of different uh, activities going. And you'll notice that every one of these has an NCV, uh, a present value associated with it. And that is, again, a result of our financial analysts who developed and, and determined what those numbers are, and then we have these targets that we are hitting as an organization. We're basically self-funded, so we have to get out there and find those opportunities. Again, back to the, the idea of how do the scouts, how, what motivates the scouts, and how do we do it? Well, the team as a whole is motivated by hitting our goal, hitting our number. We have to get those um, items that we've identified over the line. And so, in order to do that, we have to go through implementation. Now, here's something that's a little bit of a difference between our innovation practice and what you may see in some companies. We are only responsible for getting things through the proof of concept, pilot stage, developing the business case, and all the documentation associated with that. And then we basically hand that off to the business to go through a traditional project management scaled implementation. So we are actually not responsible for implementing these things across the entire echelon. Um, we, are, we are responsible for proving that the value exists and the opportunity is there within that particular area of the, of the company. So we provide a solid business case, a proven business case. We provide all the documentation, all the support information, the contacts, the, the uh, e ecosystem um, members that, that participated in this effort, all of the things that are part of the implementation, we are part of this kind of handoff to a more traditional project management approach to be able to move these things through to full implementation. But in order for us to keep the momentum, we, we, just, we can't um, stay with these things all the way through. We're actually, the scouts by this time, we're actually moving into the next Items. They're working on the next project and the next business problem that we're trying to solve and working through. At any given time, we've got a, a pipeline of all of these different things that are in different stages of activity that we're, that we're monitoring in order to, to get these things through to, to implementation. So let me uh, just take one of these examples where we have uh, very early in, in the development of the team. The team was just organized. We had uh, an idea that we wanted to take a look at one of the uh, telepresence robots. Now, the telepresence robots, or think of it as like an iPad on a, on a Segway, that, that you can kind of move those around. You can use an iPhone or an iPad. You can, you can drive them around. You can interact with people at different locations. And so we had one of these. We were, we were experimenting with it. We got it connected to the network. We were able to, to operate it, work with it. We were kind of looking at some of the things we could do. We had one of, the, of our scouts decided he wanted to take it out to one of the power plants, one of our, our generation plants, and just show them this technology, what this thing might look like. And coincidentally, what happened was during the time that he was taking this robot out there, there was a, a, um, a maintenance procedure that was being performed at the plant. And this is a maintenance procedure that, that was kind of rare. It doesn't happen very often. And a lot of managers at other plants had never seen it or had, you know, they, they didn't really have a lot of experience, experience going to 
Well, we actually leverage the robot. We let them connect in to the robot, be able to actually interact with the, the maintenance technicians to be able to move it around, to get different views, to be able to see what was going on, ask questions, um, and, and participate in that activity. Went over very, very well. They, this uh, excerpt that you see here was actually posted in their uh, internal inside nuclear uh, newsletter, which goes across all of the nuclear uh, plants and all of our Exelon generation um, back in September of 2013. So we've since then really expanded on this idea of how can we use some of these uh, cell presence robots or other types of special pro purpose robots. We have other robots that we employ in some of the generation plants as well to do some other things. But it's all about inspiring people to think, well, how could we use something like this in our part of the business and what are some of the things that we've done? And even our commercial business uses this for communicating. Again, remember we're so distributed around the country that they're able to have people from Houston be able to connect to Baltimore and participate in meetings and they can um, actually interact with people at the, at the meeting. So that's, that's pretty much uh, the story of how we, we were able to rapidly put our uh, system or organization together and all the things that, that we've done up to this point. One thing I will say is we are not going through iterations. We are in a continuous improvement mode and we go through evolution. If you come back or if you visit us two or three months from now, you'll see many of the same things that look familiar, but you'll see them expanded on. You'll see them improved. You'll see more uh, uh, things that relate to, to uh, the activities that we've done. So we've, from the very beginning, when we established what we did, we, did, we never went back and changed it. We never went back and did something differently. We just built on where we were going slowly, that gradual uh, changing the climate to impact the culture. We, we went through that effort of making those gradual changes. We had a vision of where we wanted to be, but we knew that it was going to take some time for us to get there, and we were going to have to introduce these things gradually and show some results, show some benefits, get the message out there, really market, really communicate, get the buy-in from leadership to be able to make these things happen. And we were able to do it very, very quickly, um, much much more quickly than, than I think the expectation was. Now, we have a lot of pressure from our chief innovation officer and our, and our CEO to keep moving, to keep making this happen, and keep you know, working on changing it. So we're always, you know, we, we kind of accept that. We, we embrace that as, as something that motivates us to look for those opportunities to really push innovation and make innovation a core competency across that form. Now, ready for some questions? Dennis, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Just a, a, a fascinating presentation. And, and I know that by the questions we have in here, people have really been listening and absorbing the material. Let me start with uh, a couple here. And thank you for putting your email up. It sounds as though, Dennis, you're receptive to getting questions emailed to you as well. Yes. No, no problem at all. I love to share. Uh, I'm at that stage where I, I love to be a mentor. I love to share experience and information whatever I can and make connections wherever I can. Great, great. And thank you so much for that. So let's jump into a couple of these here. So uh, one question is, if your team is not responsible for implementation, are you responsible for tracking these outcomes? Well, the, the, we're, we're not responsible for tracking the end um, implementation, but that does occur. That occurs through our normal uh, project management and portfolio management process. So these things are identified um, and they are tracked. It's just not part of our responsibility. Now, we do stay aware of those things because they originate from us. So we have a whole series of reports, structures, dashboards, um, we have we have uh, some some gamification where we have competition between the scouts on the team to be able to show you know where they are and being able to move these things you know throughout their different stages. But the the full implementation or scaled implementation is really more of a traditional project management approach, and it's really not our area of of, uh, of focus. 
Thank you very much, Dennis. So next question, what is your group's link to organizational strategy, looking out three years, five years, and, and how do you uh, establish and take some direction from, from that group as you plan out your strategy? Good, good question. That's actually an area of evolution that we're going through right now. Because we did have a, a um, initially a corporate ventures organization. We did have other areas within Exelon that were focused on the growth strategy and looking for new opportunities and new evolving um, things outside of our core. And if you recall, in the beginning, our focus has been primarily around the efficiency, so innovation uh, efficiency within the organization. But now we are evolving to the point where we're building this relationship with more of an entrepreneurial um, view of how we uh, establish those entities within the organization that all work together. They all kind of, it's almost like we're sitting on each other's boards or sitting on each other's panels to be able to focus on those areas. Like in, in some cases, there may be um, a ventures group that's focusing on look opportunities for investment. There's another group that may be focused on an entrepreneurial view of, of how do we partner and develop an opportunity with a, uh, a partner within the organization. And then our group focusing on efficiency. And we're all kind of collaborating and working together. Now, great question about this strategy piece, because strategy is something that is always part of the organization, but there has to be a relationship because, again, Innovation can be disruptive. You have these emerging trends. You have these things that occur that can disrupt your, your planned activities. So there, it is very important that there is some communication and collaboration between your strategy organization, and we have several, right? We have strategy for our commercial business and, and strategy for you know, generation and some of the other areas, the utility companies have their, their strategy. So we actually work with them in some of those areas because those strategies can give us some hints or some clues on technologies that we may want to take a closer look at. But in areas where we think there, there needs to be some more focus, we can determine that by working with them on, on the strategy. But we're not, we're not part of the strategy organization. That's not our responsibility. We just work closely with some of those other areas. Thank you, Dennis. There were a number of questions on uh, about how you work with us. Could you elaborate just a little bit more around that? Um, well, we have um, a, a relationship with Imaginatic that allows us to participate in a variety of activities. Imaginatic has been a great host for uh, some roundtable discussions to be able to get companies together to talk about their innovation activities. Uh, they have the uh, Innovation Leaders Summit that uh, brings together speakers that allows us to have a great networking opportunity and be able to discuss uh, some you know, next, next generation ideas around innovation. We, of course, have the whole product uh, suite of tools that, that Imaginatic provides. We focus primarily on the uh, ideation, uh, idea um, challenge component of that, and we're looking to expand in, in working with some other areas of Imaginatic in, in uh, developing that kind of an innovation portal um, process that uh, we've got in mind to do something along the lines of a, a Kickstarter or, or something like that that might um, 